Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Grilled Carnitas. So today we're cooking down some carnitas on the grill in a Dutch oven. We're gonna start with a pork butt, cube it up, we're gonna add some aromatics, uh, a little bit of veggie stock, and then as all of that starts to cook down on the grill, it's gonna pick up the smoke and the color from the fire, and then as that fat breaks down, it starts to confit in its own fat, and that's when the magic really happens. So we're gonna finish with a nice crispy pork product that you can throw into tacos, into burritos, on nachos, whatever you like. This pork is gonna have incredible mouth feel. It just falls apart in your mouth, but it's got that texture on the outside that you need. Let's jump right in. Now, before we get to the pork, we're gonna fire up the grill. We're cooking today on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running hickory pellets and we're cooking hot. We're gonna be cooking about 425 degrees. Come here, I'll show you the setup. We're just getting this thing started, so it's coming up to temperature, but as you can see, we've removed our door to give us a little bit of a direct heat here. Our Dutch oven's gonna live right in this area as we cook today, so we're gonna be a little bit away from that direct heat, but since we're cooking so hot, we wanna make sure we take that door out. So we're starting with the Boston butt pork shoulder. As you can see, we've got a nice fat cap on the top here, and that fat is really what's gonna start to confit or cook this pork in its own fat. Uh, if we were working with belly, we'd have even more of that, but this is such an accessible cut that this is the cut I wanted to go with today. We're gonna supplement some of that extra fat that we want with a little bit of uh, Manteca lard as well. But before we get there, I'm just gonna feel around on the surface here. There's a couple spots where I can feel like some cartilage that's been left behind. I'm just gonna get rid of that because nobody wants to bite into that later. But the idea here is we're gonna get about four or five pounds of the meat off the bone here and cube it up for the Dutch oven. So the blade bone sort of sits right in the middle here and there's this crevice that opens up to kind of get you closer to that blade bone and that's where we're going to slice down to start getting this meat separated from that bone. So right here you'll hear there's some of that bone underneath so we're just kind of following that bone until we get to the end of it and you can feel that with your hand and I'll just cut straight down there. I'm gonna set this bone section aside for now. So now this two thirds of our butt is essentially boneless at this point. We've got a good bit of fat here. We wanna make sure that we include that when we're cubing stuff up. And we're just gonna go for some larger chunks, a couple inches cubed, something roughly two by two. You don't have to be exact here but you want something that's big enough that it holds its texture through a braise over the next few hours. Once we're working with this pork butt kind of in this size and broken down, you can also keep in mind that this stuff is great for saving for sausage. So if you're not gonna use all this pork butt today, go ahead and put it in the freezer for making sausage later on. Now I do want some more of this fat cap from that bone in, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice that off. And if you're not gonna make sausage and you're wondering, well, what do I do with this meat around this bone? Throw this in a pot with some veggies, some onions, some carrots, make a nice pork stock. This stuff will shred up and you can throw it in with some sauerkraut, in with some beans, whatever you think. Here's some more of that fat from the fat cap. Cube that up. It's a little bit smaller. So I don't know, we've got four or five, five pounds probably of our pork here. That part's not super important. What's important is take a look at your cooking vessel. So this is a six quart lodge enamel Dutch oven. That's what we're gonna be cooking in. And this looks like about the right amount to fill this up, not all the way to the top, but to hold all of this meat without really overcrowding it. So we want some surface area exposed so that we can get some color on the top while it's on the grill. But we don't want this thing overflowing because it's gonna cook down. So we can go straight into the Dutch oven with our pork butt. And then we've got some extra aromatics and flavorings to add. So like I said, we're gonna supplement with some Manteca lard. That's about a half cup, and that's gonna help with that confit process once that liquid is kind of braised down. Uh, for the seasonings here, there's a lot of different ways you can go. You can go as simple or complicated as you want. We're gonna start with a quarter cup of our Mexicano seasoning, just great cumin. Uh, some paprika, salt, pepper, garlic, all the things you think of when you're thinking of kind of Mexican or Tex-Mex flavors. I'm also gonna add a little bit of this smoky red chili hot sauce. Another optional ingredient, a couple tablespoons. This adds a good vinegar bite as well as that kind of chipotle smokiness. 
And then we're gonna get into our aromatics. So I've got about six cloves of garlic here. We've got a bay leaf, we'll throw that in. And then we're gonna take one yellow onion and slice this down. The garlic cloves, I just want them crushed and peeled. This is gonna braise for so long that this garlic, the flesh of the garlic itself is going to just melt away after so many hours of braising. So we don't really need to chop it up. Uh, the onion, I just want the onion to melt away, much like the garlic, into our braise, into our carnitas. So I'm going to break this down really fine, and we're just going to watch this onion disappear once it's sliced and incorporated into all of that braise and eventually kind of into that confit. So all the aromatics going in now, we've already got that bay leaf in there, we've got the onions, we've got the garlic, and now we're gonna add a little bit of citrus. So I'm gonna juice a couple of oranges here, we're gonna throw that in for a nice subtle little citrus. Orange is a great flavor to go with carnitas. Um, it's again kind of an optional one, I don't like to skip it, but you can, I'm telling you, you can go as hardcore or as easy as you want with these carnitas. We could go salt and pepper with nothing but the pork and some water and fat in there and it'd still be delicious. But we're really trying to create some complexities with these aromatics and with our seasonings. So that came out to a little over a half cup of orange juice. All right, so now we're gonna get our hands dirty. Just kind of mix everything around coat all that pork. Oh man, it smells incredible already. I'm picking up on the cumin out of that Mexicano rub. And the orange juice for sure. What a killer combination. All right, so now that we've got that all mixed up, the only thing left to do is to add some vegetable stock. I'm just going to add enough stock to kind of come to the top and we can add more as it cooks and as we need. So I don't want it completely submerged. Just right up to the top, a little bit more. And again, you can use water if that's all you have right now. You can use chicken stock. Uh, don't get too caught up in the specifics. Do a little experimentation and see what works best for you. So now the Dutch oven's going onto the grill. We're going uncovered. We want to make sure that we get all of this flavor coming from the fire, the smoke. We want the color on top. We need the evaporative cooking so that that stock begins to work its way down and that fat renders out and starts to cone fee the meat. So now we just gotta be patient. We'll give it about an hour before we check on it again. We're gonna keep an eye on that liquid level. We do want it to reduce down, but we don't want it to get totally dry because then we risk scorching the bottom. So we're just gonna respond as we see how this cooks. Well, we're about an hour in here. We've got a nice little simmer going on on the fire side. Everything's coming up to temperature. You can see that steam coming off the top and it's starting to pick up just a little bit of color on top. So I'm gonna stir this around so we can continue to kind of add some of that color uh, to the other surfaces. But for now, close the lid and let it ride. Well, we're about three hours into this cook now. Most of that liquid has reduced out of the pot and the pork chunks are getting just super tender. You can see them bubbling away in the pork fat and the little bit of liquid that's left. Come take a look. So you can see this sort of clear liquid here. That's actually that pork fat that like we talked about, is kind of going through that cone feed process. And as we uncover this, you see how it's a little lighter underneath. So we've been taking on the color from the top, from the flame and from the grill. And then just poking around on this piece of pork, if we kind of smash our spoon into that, you can see just how tender it is. It's starting to fall apart. We're not all the way yet, there yet, which is great because we want it to have some texture. But this is really ready to come off just the way it is. And we're gonna fry this up in a skillet to make some tacos. And this just smells incredible, guys. Now looking around in here, you can see how this pork, these smaller pieces especially, are starting to shred apart. Got all this flavor and liquid in here. I'm gonna fish that bay leaf out because we don't need to 
eat on that. But all of those onions have just melted away into this sauce, into the pork, as well as that garlic. We're gonna let this rest just a little bit while we put together some toppings. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there's any number of ways that you could serve up your carnitas. Uh, put it in a burrito bowl with some beans and some rice maybe, make a salad out of it. I love it for breakfast with some eggs and some hot sauce. Today, we're gonna keep it super simple. Just toast off some corn tortillas, fill up those tortillas with our carnitas and top it off with some pico and a few other items. So we'll just chop up an onion here, dice it up nice and fine. Next, we'll dice up some fresh tomato. And I don't have any serranos on hand today, so we're gonna use some jalapenos, which somehow are always in the fridge here at All Things Barbecue. And we'll dice those up pretty fine. And we're gonna get some cilantro in there. And then of course we're gonna need some lime juice in there. We'll put some of that Jacobson black garlic sea salt in there. And work in just a little bit of that garlic flavor. So nice fresh ingredients with a bite should really contrast that fatty pork. And that's gonna help us achieve some really nice balance. So we got a nice hot skillet going. Just gonna put a little bit of our chili oil down. And then throw in some corn tortillas. Soften those up and toast them just a little bit. Just look for a little bit of browning on there. It should start to soften up and become a bit more pliable while also getting just a little bit of crisp on the surface. All right, so they're warm, they're pliable, just a little bit of crisp to them. I'm gonna land them right here in the middle of this towel, which has just warm water rang out of it. I like to keep this just a little bit moist in here, and that's gonna keep these tortillas nice and fresh and warm. All right, so now we're gonna crisp up our carnitas, and I've got some of that fat that I just skimmed out of the Dutch oven with the carnitas. So kind of over like a medium high heat, somewhere in there, we're just gonna let these sit and form a nice crust on the bottom and then we'll move them around a little bit. All right, so we're getting some nice texture on there. I'm gonna move these around. Let that other side kind of crisp up and then we'll make our tacos. All right, so time to load up our tortillas with our carnitas. Gonna go pico right on top. And I love the smell of that fresh pico. It's so bright, that citrusy. A little bit of queso fresco. And then we'll just finish it off with some crema. All right, well, let's dig in. Oh, man. This makes me so happy. Mm. It takes me back to one of my favorite taco restaurants in the world, Porqueno in Portland, Oregon. The street tacos are incredible. I'm getting all of it. I'm getting the crunch. I'm getting the fat of the pork but it's so bright and refreshing to have that pico on top and the lime juice just at the end and the corn tortilla. I mean, I love a flour tortilla, but this just feels classic. 
I'm about to put a hurting on these tacos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.